Hi, a very good evening to everyone. Thank you so much for spending your lovely evening with me as well as Dr. Chong. Uh, my name is Nana and I will be I I'm your nutritionist for today as well as a so for today, we actually have uh, invited a really exclusive guest to actually um, share more with us on this se session of prostate health. Um, so let's get into this topic to find out how we can actually get stronger together. So this topic is especially exclusive for men only. All right, so I will list some statistics with you. So just want to share with you on the topic of benign prostatic hyperplasia. For men between the age of 51, and 60 years old, five of them people will actually have this BP. And along with age, for men in between the old age of 80, nine out of 10 people will actually be affected by benign prosthetic hyperplasia. So we can actually see that along with age, the risk uh, for BPH will in fact actually increase. So um, you might want to ask, actually, is there a cure for this? Is there anything we can actually do about this? So for this specific question, I will leave for our expert to answer later on. All right, so that's why we have invited a really special and exclusive guest together with us, um, our guest speaker, Dr. Chong Kien Tai, uh, who is a surgeon as well as a health tech innovator. So Dr. Chong himself is a urology surgeon practicing mainly in Mount Elizabeth Novena Hospital and Farrah Park Hospital. So for him, he actually sees patients in both conditions as well as complex urologic cancers after completing full-time advanced clinical urologic oncology fellowship at the prestigious Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York, USA in the year of 2009. Dr. Chang himself, he's also an advocate for medical education, health tech innovation, and holistic urological cancer care. He is also the co-founder of Asia MD with its mission to overcome fake medical news and to help the public find the best medical care at this website of asiamd.com. So for me, myself, I've already visited this uh, uh, website a couple of times. So um, this website actually has published a lot of medical reports, a lot of uh, medical articles that is uh, being generated as well as being supported by a lot of medical doctors as well as a lot of uh, medical practitioners. So inside this uh, uh, website itself, you can also find a wide range of doctors, a list of doctors from different various fields so that you don't have to waste time finding uh, uh, your own, the doctors that you actually need. So if you really want to find out the latest information and also the latest medical news and of uh, more reliable sources, this is actually a website that you can actually go to. All right, so you might actually feel that uh, if Dr. Chong, you find him familiar, it's actually because uh, Dr. Chong himself has actually been featured in various media before, including uh, those that is featured in the media uh, channel you I think channel you, yeah, the body SOS. So uh, he has to share about uh, prostate cancer. He also, he's also being invited uh, to this FM radio by uh, this radio show as well. And also some of his uh, medical advices, suggestions has also been published in this. Uh, All right, so enough of me saying, let's welcome Dr. Chong. Hi, Dr. Chong. Hi, hi, thank you, Nana. Thank you for inviting me. It's like going on your show. <laughs> thank you so much for actually yeah i'm really happy to uh to you again so i uh, just want to um know more about you dr chong because i've been talking so much i believe that our audience they really want to hear more from you so dr chong could you share more with us about your uh, medical journey uh, i've been a doctor for more than 20 years and i'm a urologist now so a lot of people ask uh, what does a urologist do is uh actually a surgeon who do two separate things. Number one, I tell people I'm an expensive water pipe uh, cleaner because anytime there's any problem with your urine system that joins the kidney to the bladder or letting the urine flow, I will make sure it's uh, cleared properly. But the second thing I also do as a urologist is actually I'm a gynae for men. Then many people mm -hmm. ask, how come I'm a gynae for men? Can you imagine if uh, for men, uh, usually, if you have some problem with the private part, some questions, you can't go to a gynae, right? Because gynae is for ladies to go. So, the gentleman also comes to urologist to find out about uh, what they have, any problem with their testes, the penis, the prostate problem. 
uh, they also come to uh, urologists. So that's what I do as well. So that's basically my day job. And of course, uh, I love to do uh, medical information. And thanks for sharing one mm -hmm. of my uh, 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 startups that actually helps to um, make sure we don't have fake medical news. So thank you very much. Yeah, this is a website and it's a very good website that uh, to share with more people so that people can get access to the most reliable uh, reliable medical news as well. All right, so it seems like you are really the saver for a lot of men, which is the reason why I'm very happy that you are uh, together with us again for this session. So um, just as we mentioned like about BBH, so let's start with the myth first. So um, is it true that this condition of BBH only occurs in older men, like younger men cannot, like they don't have this at all? So BBH stands for benign prostate hyperplasia. So a lot of men ask, what do the prostate do, right? Because only men has prostate. So the aim of prostate is to give the nutrition, the fluid of the prostate actually give the semen when you ejaculate or have sex. The semen that comes out is white in color because sperm need to actually swim uh, inside a lady for some time. So it needs nutrition. So prostate fluid give nutrition and, as, and it is part of the semen. When uh, all the guys are growing up, remember guys, when you were in the teenage years, you start to grow uh, your pubic hair, your, your, your private organs will change. That's because you have the effect of a male, testoster a male uh, hormone called testosterone. So this man hormone actually increases with time. And then your prostate, because of the testosterone hormone, will grow bigger in size. Which means that by a certain age, most people about by the time of 50 years old, the prostate will grow big enough to cause some problem. But it doesn't mean that mm. if you're 40 years old, you don't get prostate problem. You still may get, but although less. But we all know that BPH, as the prostate enlarges, it usually affects the urine system uh, of the older man because with more time and more influence of the testosterone, the cells always get bigger. So in fact, this is uh, what every man will have. Every man will have enlarged prostate. But it is mm -hmm. only how it affects your urine system and whether it causes any problem when you pass urine. I see. So like what you mentioned, BPH is just uh, age. Like, like for age, right, for BPH, it's just a risk factor. So it doesn't be occurs in an older man. If let's say we don't take good care of our prostate, uh, somewhere or another, maybe it might still happen like, in the younger, not say younger age, right? Correct. Yes, correct. Okay, so actually just now you did mention a bit about this life development of the prostate, like since young, from young, as you get older, elaborate more specifically on this entire life stages. Yes, so when we grow older, most of the time, uh, the prostate is actually just below the bladder. If you look at the diagram on the right-hand side, just below the mm. bladder, and if it's a, uh, Getting bigger, you know that it is acting like a traffic jam along the path of the urine tract. So whatever your bladder press on very hard, even on top of the prostate, it may not get through an enlarged prostate, which is why when the prostate gets bigger, it can cause a flow obstruction. It's like uh, if you are trying to go from uh, Woodland to Orchard Road, right? If you get traffic jam mm -hmm. at Topayo, then all of it will get stuck. So you, our goal when we see a man with big prostate is to make sure we relieve any obstruction so that urine can flow well. I see. So even when I, when I was hearing start questions, so I really want to tell our audience that um, for this session, like if you if in the, this means of the sharing, you have questions that you want to ask like Dr. Chong, feel free to actually type them in the chat box because we have actually a leave a special 15 minutes Q&A session for you guys so that we, uh, Dr. Chong is here together with us to ask as many questions about medical or be about prostate health as much as possible. He will actually try his best to answer. All right, so um, hearing what you mentioned, because along with age, we also know that like uh, as men start to have like partners, etc. cetera, like the frequency of the uh, uh, this uh, sexual activity also start to increase or maybe like for some people, they don't have sexual activities. So there is actually this myth that if you were to like have frequent or infrequent sexual activities, it's going to be really unhealthy for the prostate health. So what's your opinion in this Dr. Chong? Actually, this is a very frequent question that people ask. 
should I have more sex or less sex? Whether it's healthy or not for the prostate. But actually, I think the correct question is whether having frequent or infrequent sexual activity, is it unhealthy for your own health or your mental state or your relationship with your partner? Because the frequency, the number of sexual activity is actually dependent on both parties, right? Also with the sexual partner that you have. Whether you ejaculate more or less, actually, we do not have a real scientific proof whether it affects the growth of prostate or whether there's prostate cancer. There are some research that say it can affect, there are some that not say. So we actually do not have a conclusion on whether it's healthy or not. But I feel that if you are talking about sexual activity, always discuss with your partner to find out what's her preference and then make sure both of you are happy because sexual activity is actually a close relationship between you and your partner. So mm, the answer to I... your question is actually, uh, there's no conclusion whether it's healthy okay. or not. Okay, okay. When it comes to sexual activity, more important is communication, right, among the partners. I see. Okay, so we'll be talking um, about like BBH, like this benign prostate hyperplasia. So what exactly is BBH, Dr. Tong? So when we talk about BPH, the benign is a good word because it means there's no cancer. It simply means that the prostate grows bigger because of age-related issue. So the normal size prostate, as you can see on the left-hand diagram, is actually the size of a walnut, not very big, so that the urine can flow very well from the bladder downwards through the prostate out into the toilet bowl. However, if the prostate actually becomes bigger, it can even become the size of lemon or even bigger, it can press the middle part of the urine so that the urine flow becomes obstruction and then it is harder to empty your bladder and when that happens, there can actually be some health problem if the urine cannot come out completely. Mm, I see. So this one is like a mild condition, but it can really cause a lot of discomfort to the people if they are down with BPH. All right. So if let's say one suspect that he or she has this sin, uh, BPH, what are the signs they actually look out for? A lot of men think that uh, what they when they pass urine, Let's say, you, if you look at the whole list, some men think that mm, it's okay to pass urine often or weak urine stream. Uh, actually, these are all signs that the prostate is bigger and it causes some form of blockage along the urine flow. For example, as you see on this diagram, it can be urine that don't shoot as far as when you were younger. Secondly, because you don't empty your bladder completely, actually, you need to keep going to the toilet because the bladder is half empty when you go to the toilet and it fills up very fast again. So you have to go to the toilet very often in the day or even the night time. And men do not know uh, in, in the past, they used to think that waking up at night to pass urine is okay, but that's not correct. Because you should not wake up at night to pass urine more than one time. If you wake up to pass urine more than one time, please see a doctor to see to check whether you have big prostate. So the other problems of uh, enlarged prostate is that it's much uh, difficult to empty all the bladder urine so the urine will actually dribble out onto the underwear and then you may feel like urgent all the time you try to go to the toilet. So these are some of the issues that you will find if you have enlarged prostate. Mm. Hey, but in this case, like, when it comes to like urination at night, right? I do hurt like people, you're drinking too much water, it can actually lead to frequent urination. So it, could it be one of the cause as well? Yes, you're right. So it's best to check with a doctor whether it is because of medical condition like enlarged prostate or simply because you drink too much at night or some people drink coffee or tea at night and then this causes more urine when you're sleeping. So a doctor can actually help you check out what is the actual cause uh, if you're not so mm. sure. That's because you should mm. actually not be waking up more than once at night to pass urine. I see, I see. So it's best we to read for the doctors uh, uh, to, to see what's really going on in the body. Okay, right. okay, got it, got it. I see. So um, in that case, like uh, for some people who actually do want to, you know, like make an initial uh, diagnosis of this uh, BPH, uh, we, actually, we have actually prepared this uh, IBSS International Prosthetic Symptom Score for people to, uh, you know, do like an initial diagnosis of a BBH, BBH at home. So, like Dr. Chong, could you uh like elaborate and share with us what is this form about? So this form 
is actually called uh, International Prostate Symptom Score. This is one of the score survey form which, which we give to every man. You can even do it at home and you Google and check online, you will find this. It has many languages, including Malay, Chinese, and it's used around the world. Every man can do this form. So once you do this form and realize that you look at the bottom, there's a scoring system. If the total score of all the seven questions is more than eight, which means you have either moderate or severe symptom because of a big prostate. So please see a doctor if your own score is more than eight or more. Eight or more. But if it's very mild, maybe you can just observe and watch it. No need to see a doctor yet. So anytime your score is moderate or severe, which is total score is more than eight, you can always see a GP first and then find out is it a prostate problem or is it because like what Nana said, you drink too much water and then uh, you keep going to the toilet and, and that's mm. the solution is just drink less. So those are the things that doctors always check uh, for you. Mm, I see. So like in this, uh, I think in this score itself, we did mention that like incomplete emptying of the bladder is actually one of the actually signs and symptoms to look out for. So when it comes to like incomplete emptying, right, if let's say the bladder does not empty completely, what kind of consequences can it actually lead to in this case? If you imagine that the bladder is a reservoir where you keep all the urine, imagine a cup that is not empty completely and it's easy for bacteria to be swimming inside and stay there. And the other problem is very easy for kidney stones or bladder stone or urine stone to form because all the sediments in the urine will always be staying there and cannot empty completely. That can lead to kidney stones, bladder stone and ureter stone. And in the long term, sometimes some patients actually keep so much urine that the you, the bladder is so full, it backflow upwards into the kidney and cause kidney failure. I do see patients with kidney failure and then that's very bad because you might need dialysis and that's not what you want to do. So we always want to make sure bladder can be empty completely to prevent all these complications. Thank you so much for coming for this session and really hope that Really hope that next time we'll be able to invite you again and come for the next session also. Okay, oh. hope to see you next time. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's a very fun session. Thanks a lot.